This is the word of God. You shall not make for yourself a carved image, any likeness of anything that is in heaven above or that is in the earth beneath or that is in the water under the earth. You shall not bow down to them nor serve them. For I, the Lord your God, am a jealous God, visiting the iniquity of the fathers upon the children to the third and fourth generations of those who hate me, but showing mercy to thousands of those who love me and keep his commandments. Praise God for that promise. Well, we see here that, and we saw in the answer uh, that just a few minutes ago that you stated that there are kind of three parts, at least in the shorter catechism. If you go to the larger catechism, this is more expanded, and I would encourage you to do that. But it talked about three parts. What, are, what is required of us in applying this commandment? So first of all, it talked about receiving God's word, receiving it. Then it talked about observing God's word. And then it says, keeping pure and entire or complete what God has commanded in his word. So those are the three requirements. So we'll just think about that for a minute as we come to the table. First of all, receiving. Receiving means we hear the word of God as often as we can, in all the ways that we can in our technology. We hear it, and we read it, and we study it. We talk about it in every way. And so we accept with open hearts the commandments with joy this is what I think it means. We, we hunger for it. So we must put ourselves in a place or in a way where we can hear the word and learn it and then enable our families to also so that uh, they can hear the word. And then we are to teach them to our children, as we see, and to others so that they can receive the word. And so let's pray that we would be teachable, that we would be hungry and thirsty for the word of God and receive his word even today, even now. Secondly, we're to observe. Observing means to uh, not just see, this isn't that kind of a observe here, means to commit ourselves to obedience, to observe it. Often in scripture, especially in Deuteronomy, it talks about observing, obeying. So we apply the word of God. We put what we learn, what we have received, into practice. And you know in James it says that we're to be doers of the word, not just hearers only. Uh, because it says very clearly that if we only hear but are not active in doing, we are deceiving ourselves. It's very clear in Scripture. We're, we're, being, we're deceived. We're deceived if we think we can just keep learning and not apply the Word of God. So we were reminded last week from Pastor Smith in his sermon, the words of Jesus uh, to his people, to us all. Matthew 28 in the Great Commission. Go therefore and make disciples teaching them to observe all that I have commanded you. Certainly we need his grace to, to do that, to help others seek to apply the word of God. It is the Lord's desire that we make disciples, and to do that we are to teach them to observe what he has commanded, what we have received. So we're to receive and observe ourselves and practice uh, the word ourselves in order to do that. So the Lord said to Joshua, this is in Joshua chapter one, verses seven and eight. Only be strong, he said to Joshua. Joshua had quite a task facing him. Only be strong and very courageous that you may observe to do according to all the law which Moses my servant commanded you. Do not turn from it to the right hand or to the left that you may prosper wherever you go. Don't deviate from this law. And then verse eight says, this book of the law shall not depart from your mouth but you shall meditate in it day and night that you may observe to do according to all that is written in it. Observe to do. For then you will make your way prosperous and then you will have good success as you obey and apply the word of God. We are to meditate on the word of God and think on it all the time in order to do it. Psalm 1 says we should be like trees that are planted by streams of living water in order to suck that up, the nourishment we need. And then bring forth fruit. We're to bear fruit as we obey the word of God. And we need to encourage each other here, as we do, uh, even more so, to be strong and to be courageous in applying the word of God because sometimes it is hard to do. But the only way we will prosper in the Lord is if we are doers of the word, which of course means we have already received it. We, we long to have it, and we, we are continually receiving it, and then we're continually learning, what does that mean? I need to apply this. 
Well, finally, in the catechism, it said we're to keep pure and entire all that God has appointed in his word. In other words, to keep uh, worship pure. As I mentioned last week, the regulatory principle. We're to keep worship pure as God has commanded in his word. We're still learning. Praise God. Now, Ezra did all three of these. Ezra 7.10, good verse to memorize. It says, Ezra had set his heart to, uh, set his heart to seek, or some versions say study, the law of God. So he received it, he studied it. And to do it, so he observed it himself. He obeyed it, um, more than just receiving knowledge, and to teach statutes and ordinances in Israel. So Ezra set his heart to study the law of the Lord and to do it, in this order it's important, study the law of the Lord and to do it and to teach his commandments and statutes in Israel. So this is a good pattern for us. So a final observation of the second commandment is that it mentions children. And when this commandment is violated, our children suffer. When it is obeyed, they are blessed. They are blessed generationally. We are blessed generationally. So let's pray that our children and our future generations continue to receive the word of God, the commandments. Let's pray that. Pray that they would be those who observe. In other words, they are doers and hearers. And that they become leaders in keeping worship pure and entire as God has appointed in his word. May many generations know the blessing of the Lord. And let's take the bread and the wine this morning, brothers and sisters, all of us, in the same way. Let's take it in the same way, with the desire to receive the word of God with teachable hearts. And we will receive that as Michael is preaching from Romans 1. Pray that God would prepare you for that, that you would receive the word of God with teachable hearts. Uh, The word, and also the word from the songs. And secondly, that you would commit yourselves again to obeying the word, all of it, and be courageous in its application. And then finally, more and more to teach it, to proclaim the truth, because this honors the Lord who died on the cross to pay the penalty for our sin. Let's pray. Lord, we do think of Ezra, and thank you for that model that you have given, and we pray that you would make us like Ezra, who set his heart to study and to know the commandments, and then he sought to do them, to apply them, to live them out, and then he was able to teach them. Lord, we receive today your command to partake of this communion with you until you come, and we rejoice in it. And and we now obey your command and desire by your grace to teach your word, to share your word as you have commanded. Lord, we pray for teachable and obedient hearts as we join together in this communion meal. In the name of Jesus Christ, who obeyed the law perfectly, we pray. Amen.